So we have to be very careful about this. And I think we've seen that across the ecosystem, not only within Cosmos, but also in other, other chains. So one way of going about it is the way we're, we're going to go out as well is to pick a, a set like based on a lot of on-chain metrics, like who has been a quality validator for a longer period of time, like what are the really the, um, the characteristics of this validator. And we combine that with off-chain metrics, reputation, size of the organization as a whole, like the, the trust that we have in the operational capability of that validator to make sure they are always like signing blogs, that they are not getting slashed, that they're not getting jailed, uh, because all of that will impact the user's return and the, the security, of course, as a whole of, of the protocol. So ideally, like, um, I don't know the exact number, but we'll go out with a relatively limited set, not too big, not too small of, of validators that have been carefully selected. And uh, that will include like bigger validators, uh, but also smaller ones. Like I think we want to increase decentralization as, as a whole. Jiren, welcome to the Cosmoverse YouTube channel. It's such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much, uh, Yuri. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the invite. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. We are so pumped to have you on the ground in Medellin in less than one week. How crazy is that? Um, but before we do that, um, there has been a lot of developments uh, ongoing uh, at Persistence. So, um, yeah, maybe you could uh, briefly introduce um, yourself before we do that. So um, you are quite a new team member at Persistence. So before we dive deeper into all of these new developments at Persistence, it would be super cool if you could give us like a broad overview of yourself. Yeah, sure. Of course. Um, so my name is uh, Jeroen. Um, I've been with Persistence for about one year now. So I mean, not that new, um, but still uh, still young. Um, so I live in uh, live in Lisbon, uh, originally from from Belgium. Um, have actually a background in traditional finance and, and consulting. Like lived in many places. I lived in Paris for a bit. Like moved to Singapore, um, all for for that financial services consulting. Uh, but then got into the startup scene. Um, did, did actually a few startups like within the web two uh web two space uh always been focused on like product technology and operations those three things are like things i like to work on um got attracted to web three in general uh crypto of course um has been like attractive and uh, always been looking on, on those things and uh, got especially interested in the cosmos ecosystem in general um proof of stake more specific um, and have um, yeah have been following that since uh, since I actually lived in Singapore. Um, ultimately, kind of wanted to move out of the Web two, like uh, spearhead into Web three. Uh, came along persistence, um, and uh, yeah, a few months a uh, few months later, I managed to uh, score score a position at persistence and join the persistence team. Um, have had a bit of, of a journey there. Um, like started off on the uh, audit one validator arm. Uh, worked a lot on the the BD side of things there, um, and then kind of grew into like um, more overarm like more overarching role. Like uh, worked on um, some product and project management like across the board, but more, mainly on the B stake side, especially on the the SDK BNB project which uh, went live recently, like in August. Uh, so done a bit of work there, um, and now more recently looking um, at a lot more things on the the protocol layer itself. Um, trying to uh, help out on pretty much everything that's kind of operational across the uh, the persistence ecosystem. Um, so yeah, it's been one year, but it's been uh, yeah very interesting uh, interesting journey, and uh, yeah, so many good things coming up. So very excited about all all these things. Yeah, the Lisbon gang is in the house. Yeah, but um, very um, very very uh, very cool background. Um, and you mentioned that a lot of things are going on at uh, Persistence. Um, so maybe um, so we had a couple of interviews, for example, on the Cryptocito YouTube channel. We had some on the Friends YouTube channel, uh, but it has been a while. So uh, maybe could you like um, briefly reflect reflect what uh, you guys have been working on in the past couple of weeks specifically? So where is your focus at Persistence right now on? Yeah, sure. Um, so with persistence, I mean, maybe for the the people who don't know, like with with persistence, we're um, we're building a liquid staking hub 
uh, within the uh, Cosmos ecosystem. So where uh, persistence is a Tendermint based layer one chain, uh, really focusing on bringing uh, use cases for liquid staked assets. So we really want to become that uh, hub around everything that has to do with liquid staking. I think liquid staking has gained a lot of attention like recently. I think a lot of people know what it is. Um, and um, yeah, no, probably no need to really go into the details about like staking and liquid staking. Uh, but overall, that's what we've uh, been working on. Like we've been um, with, so with Persistence, there's different teams. So Audit One is kind of the infrastructure arm, uh, also really like driving research on our side on proof of stake in general and the industry uh, as a whole. Um, and then we have the, the Persistence Core One chain, which is kind of the enabler to uh, to build more on top of. Um, and then we have the P-Stake uh, P -stake application, which is on the application layer. So we basically have the three layers. Um, and so on the core one layer itself, like what we've recently worked on, you might have seen it, like we upgraded the chain to the V3, uh, where um, the main, I think the main functionality that was now enabled was Cosmosm, um, which is quite a huge feature so that we can have more and more people and developers come in literally to, to build on top of the persistence chain. So that was a big uh, update uh, in the recent weeks. Um, and in the meantime, we've been building on um, on the P-Stake uh, application layer. So P-Stake is actually a cross-chain liquid staking uh, protocol. Um, we have a solution that is out there for liquid staking of Atom and XPRT, but that is the ERC-20 implementation. I think we can discuss that in a, in a bit later. Um, but then we also have the uh, the recent go live of the SDK BNB solution, so which is liquid staking for Binance. Um, and now, um, yeah, I think the most exciting or the most actual is probably the one uh, around SDK Atom, uh, which is uh, has been in the works for a bit. Um, and um, yeah, can't tell you exactly the the date, but um, hopefully soon, uh, somewhere probably somewhere in uh, in October, uh, we'll go out with that and then kind of bring. Uh, liquid staked Atom, instead of on, on having it on ERC-20, having actually on Persistence itself, so natively issued on, on Persistence. Um, so yeah, that, those are kind of the major things that uh, we've been working on. And in the meantime, like really like preparing our, our ecosystem to attract more and more builders to come and build with us uh, to really kind of complete that vision of becoming the liquid staking hub um, where a lot of use cases can be enabled. Uh, and it's this, this is really like just the beginning at this stage where we issue the assets uh, on chain. But uh, yeah, there's plenty of use cases that are now to be enabled and to be built on top of the chain. Yeah, that's super cool. And um, yeah, thank you uh, for these uh, for this overview. But I think now it's like very important um, to maybe dive a little bit deeper here because you mentioned a lot of different things on uh, what you're working on. And I remember my first interview with Tushar and it was like mainly about persistence, the liquid staking hub. And this this was it. It was like uh, one and a half years ago, something like this. But now you have, you mentioned it, you have P-Stack, for example, um, and you are like also onboarding other assets to the Cosmos ecosystem in an indirectly, in an indirect uh, way, so to say. So um, what is actually the vision of persistence? Are we talking here about that persistence will be like a chain where like all kinds of projects can launch on, or are you kind of a chain that is very optimized for liquid staking and for all of these similar solutions? So where is the journey heading and what is the general vision of persistence? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great question. And uh, I mean, the answer is there, like uh, it's going to be really like focused around liquid stake uh, assets um, in general. Like that's a pretty, it's a pretty big market, but it's also niche in a way. Like we don't want to do everything because you can't just do everything. Uh, so we, we're focusing really on liquid, liquid staked assets. Um, reason for that is, I mean, it's, it's a few things, like a huge fan myself, and I think the rest of the team as well, like of fixed income in, in general and uh, like yield generation, passive income, things like those. Um, and just with liquid staked assets, you open up a lot of opportunities in that, uh, in that field. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the vision there is like, it's not really about like look what what is it that we can do around liquid staked assets. No, it's really like what is the eventual use case that we can bring to users. Um, what is like the, the real world case basically that brings users into uh, into the ecosystem and into like Cosmos into crypto in general. Um, and I think we can create a lot of 
cool use cases where the actual user doesn't really need to know the exact um, background, like about staking, about liquid staking. Like, I think what people want to see is like, look, real yield, like real fixed income. I want to have exposure to, let's say, US dollar and you have a USD uh, denominated uh, return that you can generate through a whole bunch of strategies that run through our like liquid staked assets. Um, you have people that want to have exposure to um, something completely else. They want to have exposure to, let's say, Adam or to like a basket of assets um, in, in like or digital assets, right? And they can generate yield in, in their specific way, having exposure to those. Um, and just, yeah, creating use cases around all of these things, um, making abstraction almost for the user that it is liquid staked assets. Cool. Yeah, I think um, I think this was like very very important to uh, to reflect here because um, people sometimes get also like confused, especially with the relationship between P-stack and persistence. Is um, but many people forget that this is like also its uh, its own chain built from the persistence SDK, so to say. So there's um, a lot going on. But um, also what I also want to add here, I think it's also like very smart to focus on liquid staking first because it's also an excellent way to attract uh, liquidity um, as you can use your stake position in DeFi as well. So I think this is a very wise decision. Um, but yeah, speaking of liquid staking, we have seen quite a couple of new liquid staking protocols uh, in the space. I think we can agree on that with uh, Stride and also with uh, Quicksilver. Um, so yeah, what uh, are your thoughts on this growing sector um hmm. where do you see the future and is there actually enough room for everyone so where's the liquid staking industry heading how big will it be yeah good good question and i think the i mean the absolute extreme is that like every asset um that is issued is is becoming like liquid staked assets in, in a way um because typically are ideally like everything you do with your normal assets so everything you do with your atom you should actually be able to do it with your liquid stake, Adam, because it's more capital efficient uh, in a way because you don't lose out on, on the staking rewards. Um, so in that sense, I, I think that's kind of the the ult ultimate um, like viewpoint. We probably will not get there. I'm not sure if we will. Like that's to be to be seen. Um, but when it comes to like having more and more like players in the space, um, I mean, I'm I'm very happy about that to be honest. Like I think it it shows that. Um, that um, this idea is like a valid idea. It's not um, that we're the only ones building on something. Um, like it has like a true like value to the ecosystem. It is something that is needed. There's more, more and more smart people that are looking at this, that are coming out with great solutions. Um, and we encourage this to be honest. Like it's it's almost like we're all in this together, and we're all trying to educate the user. Um, and then the actual um, like investor of source that like this is what is possible like with your your capital or with your digital assets we can make them more efficient and we're actually happy to see this and then there's a lot of innovation coming out of various projects like including our, our own project of course um, but yeah I'm only like supporting all of all of these and like we're happy to to look at that in like a, like a collaborative manner rather than like in a competitive uh, manner to just advance liquid staking as a whole. Um, because as I think, as I said, like to me, liquid staking is only the beginning. It's like the, the starting point of everything. Um, it's, it's almost like an infrastructure play where look, you have to issue these liquid staked assets. It's more efficient. Um, and once you have that, then you can actually start and build all these use cases, which is kind of the, the entire, like the entire point of liquid staking, because everyone can kind of build a liquid staking protocol, but if then you fail to make any use cases around it, um, like what's the point of it? Because then you just have the exact same as what you would have if you would have staked the asset itself uh, directly. Um, so yeah, super, super pumped about, about this. And I think everyone in the team as well, like um, we're all in this together, like a huge vision and like shared vision in this, that that this is really the, the, the way things are heading within the space. And we're all very excited to be part of this journey and like learning along the way. Um, so yeah, super fun. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, I think what is also important here is what you mentioned um, at the beginning was that, um, I mean, for, for me, it became very clear that liquid staking comes from a user demand perspective because you said, hey, people want to be more more flexible. And you mentioned all the advantages of uh, liquid staking. So we clearly see there is um, a huge user demand for this product. 
Um, the only question here for me is like, um, I mean, there are advantages, but when there are advantages, there might also be some trade-offs. And uh, some people might argue that there are trade-offs in terms of security and uh, decentralization. Um, so maybe let's start with the decentralization aspect. So when I do liquid staking, um, most of the time, so I believe um, that's not possible, but it's not possible to pick a validator, correct? Also because it would be like another um, another um, risk in terms of uh, decentralization because this would also be a way for a validator to betray, but I think that's too deep now. But um, yeah, um, how does this work on your end? So I do liquid staking, let's say with Atom on, on persistence. Are you guys picking the validator for me? And if so, how do you ensure decentralization? How do you ensure that only valid and very safe validators are being picked? Um, so yeah, what is the mm -hmm. background about this? Yeah, great. All, all great questions. And um, I think there's there's a few different ways of implementing it. And I think some some projects are looking at enabling like choosing a validator when you uh, when you liquid stake. But as you mentioned, like that opens up to a few attack vectors and then maybe too too deep to go into that. Um, but how it works with uh, with B stake in, in general, um, or at least how it will uh, will work. It hasn't been like communicated completely, I think. Um, but typically, it's it's a tough. I mean, it's a tough choice. Like because we want to be decentralized as decentralized as you can. You want to make it open, um, but you don't want to put anyone's capital at risk, right? Because all your stakers or all your users are actually delegating to uh, to one of these validators that are selected in the protocol. Now, if you just allow everyone to kind of like be one of these validators in that set, um, they could be slashed and they could lose part of their capital, right? Um, so we have to be very careful about this. And I think we've seen that across the ecosystem, not only within Cosmos, but also in other, other chains. Um, so one way of going about it is the way we're, we're going to go out as well is to uh, pick a, a set like based on uh, a lot of on-chain metrics, like who has been a quality validator for a longer period of time, uh, like what are really the, um, the characteristics of this validator. And we combine that uh, with off-chain metrics, reputation, um, size of the organization as a whole, like the, the trust that we have in, um, in in the, how do you say, operational capability of that validator to make sure they are always uh, like signing blogs, that they are not getting slashed, that they're not getting jailed, uh, because all of that will impact the user's return uh, and the, the security, of course, as a whole of, of the protocol. Um, so ideally, like, um, I don't know the exact number, but we'll go out with a relatively limited uh, set, not too big, not too small of, of validators uh, that have been carefully selected. Um, and uh, that will include like bigger validators, uh, but also smaller ones. Like I think we want to uh, like increase decentralization as, as a whole. So we can't just say, look, we're taking the top five validators or top 10 validators uh, because that wouldn't really uh, really work. Um, so yeah, like um, mainly splitting it out across validators and then governance, like once it's launched after that governance will, um, will kind of allow to expand that validator set, uh, kick out any validators that we think are non-performing or that the community things are not performing. Uh, and uh, that will be widely governed by, uh, by the P-Stake token then. Um, so yeah. I see. Yeah, um, I think um, I think this is like um, very important to highlight here, and also uh, what you mentioned with the vision of also supporting um, smaller validators. Um, like I think that's a very good um, approach to tackle this. Um, but I mean, there's also another um, part of the story here, and this is um, in regards of governance rights. Because if I stake Atom, for example, then I have my governance rights, and I can vote on governance proposals. Uh, with liquid staking, this is slightly different. Uh, so could you maybe explain to us um, how this works? Do I still have my governance uh, rights when doing liquid staking? And, uh, and if not, um, why is this so? And um, um, I talked to Mikhail recently and he said there are some solutions around the corner. So maybe if you could give us like an overview here as well, it would be super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ab absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's as you say, like uh, typically now when you uh, when you do liquid staking, uh, you basically like put your your assets into smart contract or um, into um, into a protocol that then does the liquid staking for you. Um, they delegate to the different validators, but with that, of course, you have given up your your governance rights. So if there's now a governance proposal, you can't say, "Hey, look, I'm holding SDK Adam. Uh, I want to vote on this proposal." 
it doesn't work because you're actually not like in possession of that atom which gives you the voting rights. Um, so with that, like there are um, a few solutions. Uh, like one of the solutions I think that we we have been working on is like uh, governance, like voting by proxy, um, where we kind of allow uh, I think users to vote on uh, on their side when they are holding SDK atom. And we kind of combine these votes and then cast the votes like um, accordingly. I haven't worked on this like myself uh, in, in specific, um, but that's like one way of dealing with it. Like another way is to say like you can completely ignore it in a way. Like I don't know really how big the, the demand is um, for people who liquid stake and, and want to vote. Um, because typically once you liquid stake, you also want to use your assets in other protocols like you are. You might want to log them up in another protocol um, and uh, like use them as uh, let's say collateral to borrow against and then you have a whole other like like another area of like issues with that like how do you make sure you have now that collateral there and you still want to vote like i think at some point you have to be like willing to to give up the, the governance right because you have more capital efficiency um but then that put the voting like rights in another place right they put them with someone else which then might open up some other attack vectors. So it's it's a tough one, to be honest. Like it's a discussion that is still ongoing. Like as as always, like we are doing our research on our side, like we're looking at what everything is doing. At. Like we're looking at what's possible with the technology. Um, and I think we'll also like contact the community, see what the community thinks, and then um, we'll find out a way to kind of figure out a solution that is kind of working for everyone, or at least for most of them. Like you can't please everyone, of course, but at least um, do something that is like widely accepted, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I think this is um, actually like a very uh, tricky topic in this uh, sector, maybe, but also maybe one of the most important ones uh, to solve. Uh, but yeah, let's move on uh, with a collaboration that uh, you have announced very recently, um, cross messaging with Excela. Why should mm -hmm. we care? Why is this um, why is this so big? Why is this important? Um, because cross messaging, like many people will ask themselves, hey, we have IBC. Um, what is cross chain messaging? Why do I need something? I can communicate via IBC. I can transfer my assets via IBC. Why do we need that? Hmm. Yeah, great, great question. And um, I mean, let's maybe start with like the basic, like we want to be a liquid staking hub. Um, and to be a hub, like you really need to be well connected right otherwise you're you're not really a hub um and and with that like of course cosmos itself um is is kind of like it's the um haven of composability interoperability uh, it's all there but it's also like still in the works like a lot of these things like uh, ibc is relatively young um interchain accounts interchain queries uh things like these uh, are all like in the works or like really like early stage uh, technologies. Um, and it's, it's beautiful to see like how it all works and already works within the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, but of course we wanna go wider than that. Like P-Stake, as I, I mentioned earlier, is, is a cross chain um, liquid staking uh, protocol, uh, which means that we should be able to also uh, communicate with chains that are outside of the Cosmos ecosystem, which are not IBC enabled. Um, and that's where uh, Axelar comes in. Um, Axelar, I think, well well known, but they um, they specialize in that uh, like cross chain uh, messaging. Um, and for us, working with them, like partnering with them, just makes uh, makes a ton of sense, uh, so that we can connect better to uh, to a lot of other chains, including like EVM chains. Um, and basically, with that, we could allow, for example, DApps on EVM chains to call functions on the persistence chain, uh, which again opens up. A lot of uh, use cases for the users, and I think, in the end, like it all boils down to the same thing again. Like um, for the user, it needs to be so smooth, and it needs to be user experience where he actually the user shouldn't think about okay, I now need to cross from this chain to another chain. Like the user shouldn't even think that there are chains behind the application that that he is using. He just wants to know this is a secure application that I'm using. And this, like the entire background application or how this all works, shouldn't matter too much. And that's one thing that we love to work on with with Axelar. We're exploring, like uh, we're looking, like at what what is all possible. Uh, but the broader vision is there that really like interchain communication, like cross chain communication, including like um, transfers of assets. Of course, that's 
the, the most basic one, like bridging. Um, but it can go a lot further than that. Like it can go like really to, to calling functions, uh, calling contracts, um, make like execute transactions on various chains from various chains, basically. Um, so yeah, I think quite exciting. Um, and uh, I think one of the first things we'll do with them is, is bringing um, USDC or, or, or DAI or like one type of stable coin. I, I don't think it's, it's um, decided yet which one it will be or whether it will be multiple ones to bring those into the persistence ecosystem, which will open up more, uh, more use cases. Um, but then also maybe longer term, looking at bringing staked assets uh, from various ecosystems into the persistence ecosystem or into the cosmos uh, in general. Um, and then like more widely, as I said, just like opening up and then being more interoperable and interconnected with all other chains and not only cosmos chains. Yeah. I, I think uh, this is a, a good way to put it. So basically in simple words, XLA helps you to get um, to the areas in crypto where no IBC um, is to find yet. Um, I think uh, this is um, I think this this is a very straightforward way to put it. Um, but yeah, to to wrap things all, also a little bit up, um, let's talk a little bit about um, Medellin and uh, Colombia. Uh, first of all, when will you arrive and uh, what can we expect from persistence? at Cosmos 2022? Um, so first I'm going to, to New York. So going to Messari uh, Mainnet um, with a few people of the team. Um, and then we're, I think we're flying out on Friday. So we'll arrive Friday late evening in uh, Medellin. So we have Saturday, Sunday before the conference uh, to get some things, some things ready. Um, I know we've, we've been working on a few things, um, which, uh, which should be cool, should be fun. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll help set some things up on, on Saturday, Sunday, I believe. Um, hopefully explore the city a little bit, like I've never been, uh, like uh, never really been to, to South America, like been pretty much everywhere else in the world uh, quite, quite a bit, but never really uh, been in that part of the world. So super excited uh, to go and explore, um, meet a lot of the people there, um like really uh like i mean thinking back about it actually uh cosmo verse the, the version last year was in lisbon right um that yes. was actually my my first first conference i did with with persistence um it was one of my one of my first days as well so things have changed so much and i've learned so much and i just want to continue to to kind of meet a lot of the people in the ecosystem a beautiful location i have heard it's going to be amazing um really looking forward to it and then of course like talk about everything that's going on within within the cosmos ecosystem i'm really curious about adam 2 uh, 2.0 um looking looking forward to to learning more about that um speaking to a lot of other other people developers uh, see if we can brainstorm maybe on some use cases around liquid staking um, see what people need also, like what people want to uh, to do within within the ecosystem and then especially within persistence, like whether there's something that we can help with, uh, support people or developers uh, with, with grants and bounties and whatever, see if there's any interest in things like that uh, to come to come and build with us, basically. I think that's, that's kind of a summary. Yeah, and um, on this note, I, I've seen a banner very recently on Twitter from you guys that you're also looking for for interns uh, at Cosmoverse, uh, what is this all about? <laughs> good, good question. Um, so we basically, uh, I mean, as, as we're always open to kind of meet new people and then like bring new people into uh, into the team. Like we're quite a big team already, but we keep on uh, keep on expanding, keep on hiring, and um, like with this, it's a bit of an opportunity for uh, for two people that we give to kind of come with us during the conference, um, like join the team. Um, as, as a so-called so-called intern, but uh, more as a as a friend observer, um, really get to know the team, uh, get to know persistence more from like from the background, um, see what it is that you want to do in crypto, um, see how we can help uh, connect, uh, make connections, um, and um, yeah, I think that's um, that's about it. Like uh, really looking forward to to finding two. I think it's two people um who like yeah who would like to join the team and like meet everyone and uh yeah like just uh take take them on the journey that we have been on at least for for those those few days uh, i think that would be would be a lot of fun yeah 100 percent, and we are like very looking forward uh to welcome you guys in in um in medellin and uh, maybe let's talk also about uh, one thing that um 
many people are not aware of, and we will post this on our website um, very soon. Um, so you guys, you do not really have one booth. You decided to go a little bit bigger, um, if we can put it like this. So maybe can you talk about this a little bit? Um, I'm not sure if you're asking the right person. Like um, I've been kept in the dark about um, a lot of things. I mean, I, I know high level um, that um, there will be, um, if I'm not mistaken, there will be a persistence networking lounge, um, which of course is not only to network with persistence, but it's basically for everyone uh, to come and network uh, with each other. Um, I heard there will be nice view, um, maybe, I'm not sure if I'm sharing too much here. Um, some, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to like spoil all the, uh, all, all the, the surprises. Um, but I've heard it's going to be a nice place to hang out at least. Um, talk about like whatever you want to talk about, not only crypto. Like if you want to get away from the, the conference or from the presentations itself for for a little bit, I heard that will be a pretty nice, uh, nice hideout just next to next to the conference, I believe. But you you must know better, I'm sure. Yes. Um, so I also don't want to uh, teaser too much, but um, there's a lot um, to unpack here. Um, so basically, as you mentioned, it will be a networking room. But uh, Robin, your team member at Resistance, uh, he was not shy about decorating. <laughs> so uh, he decided to go big. This is all what I can say. And um, yes, you will also have a great time there. And um, everything what's, uh, what you can expect in a networking room will be there and much more. Let's put it like this. Nice. nice. I'm very, uh, very curious. I, I know. I know Robin uh, quite well, and uh, I know he does some excellent, excellent work. So um, I'm really curious to see it all. Yes, and actually, right after this interview, I will go to the venue to, you know, make like the, the last preparations. Also, this one. So yeah, I really can't wait. We're getting closer to Cosmoverse. It's very crazy. But with that being said, um, Jurin, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, really can't wait to meet you guys in in Medellin uh, again and uh, catch up um yeah really really looking forward to next week it's uh, so crazy that i uh, say it like this but it's next week <laughs> it's there it's there no um, me too same thank you so much for um having me always happy to um to shed some more light on like what we're doing um and yeah super super pumped for uh, for many and like um yeah can't wait and i'm looking forward to to seeing all of your uh, your viewers there as well and everyone that, that will be there uh, so yeah super pumped thank you so much for having me